So good morning. First of all, I would like to thank the session organizer for <laughs> the chance they're giving me to participate at this international meeting. What I'm going to present are the results of my research down for the master's degree. It focuses on one of the still current problems of the medieval archaeology in Italy, the dating and the origin of the glazed bricks from Santa Maria del Popolo in Pavia, city that is 33 kilometers south from Milan in Lombardy region. The discovery of these glazed bricks occurred in the 30s during the dismantlement of the last part of Santa Maria del Popolo that, sta um, that started in the 1488. Santa Maria del Popolo was the Romanesque winter cathedral built in the Lombard city between the 11th and the 12th century, when it, was sti it, when still, uh, it still was the capital of the reign of Italy. In the picture, you can see the part of the facade uh, with the glazed decoration at the discovering, and on the right, the reconstructive panel of it, now conserved in the Civic uh, Museum of Pavia. The size of the bricks uh, um, is about 15 per, um, sorry, se um, 17 per 15 per 7 centimeters. As confirming by analysis, they are covered by glaze containing lead oxide or thin oxide. The unusual presence of this type of architectural glaze ceramics on a Romanesque fabric caused immediately astonishment between Italian and foreign scholars mostly because it is generally assumed that these glaze covering techniques were introduced in Italy in 13th century, so 100 years later. After the first proposal of Gaetano Ballardini in 1938, who believed that the coverings of these bricks were the results of a local trials, the problem of the origin of the Pavia bricks was faced again by Francesco Guzzi in 1970. He agreed that the finds had been produced locally since the clay which they are made of is local, but he was convinced that they had been glazed by Middle Eastern ceramists, brought to Pavia by Venetians. In occasion of um, the exhibit Quadro di Pietra in 1999, Sergio Nepoti was able to date the bricks at the really beginning of the 12th century by thermoluminescence <coughs> analysis, confirming in this way that the material belongs to the first constructive phase of Santa Maria del Popolo, so the Romanesque one. In 2004, Otto Mazzucato criticized this, this dating, sure that Pavia bricks had been worn on the facade in a more recent moment. He supported his thesis, his thesis with new thermoluminescence analysis that dated materials at 14 and 30, with a margin error of 80 years. In Italy, no contemporary comparison have been, has been found yet. Besides few bricks with some involuntary glaze drops from the Collegia, Collegiata of Saint Bartholomew in Vercelli, Piemonte region, dated in the second half of the 12th century, all the other Italian glazed bricks are dated from the 13th century on, like the two examples on the slide. On the left, there are some of the lead and tin um, glazed tiles found in San Fruttoso Ebe in Camoglio, um, Liguria region, um, dated from the, th uh, sorry, mm, found in San Fruttoso, yes, during some works uh, at the fabric done in the uh, 17th century. On the right, some of the 650 tin glazed tiles found in Priamal Fortress in Savona, so again in Liguria region. The lack in Italian comparison and the study updates make me consider that glazed bricks of Santa Maria del Popolo had been covered by foreign artisans, like Aguzzi already supposed, but I think that we shouldn't look to the Byzantine era, where there are not so many examples of this type of architectural decoration, like the ones in some fabrics of Preslav era in Bulgaria and in the city of Arta in the Epirus. I think that we should, uh, consider the exchanges of goods, ideas, and traditions between the Christian West and Islamic people through the, the Tyrrhenian Sea and the Western Mediterranean Sea between the 11th and the 12th century. As already said, these current techniques have been introduced in Italy in the 13th century. It occurs in many cities in different ways. While in Sicily, the introduction occurred after the Arab conquest, the other Italian cities, like Savona and Pisa, obtained the know-how thanks to their fervid commercial contacts with Islamic people all over the Mediterranean Sea. These contacts are also confirmed by the architectural bacini. Those dated between 11th and 12th century were principally woven fabrics of the Western area of North Central Italy, 
that is closer to the Tyrrhenian commercial exchanges. Generally, these bacini were produced in Moorish Spain, North Africa, and in some cases in the Middle East. The two examples you can see on the slide were both produced in North Africa. The one stored in the Victoria and Albert Museum doesn't come from an Italian building, but I use it as an example because it is better preserved than all the Italian ones with a lot of decoration, like the one bought on Santa Maria del Popolo, now uh, conserving the Civic Museo Museum of the city. In the, area, in the areas mentioned above, we can find also architectural glazed ceramics that can be uh, compared by chronology and type to the Pavia ones. Overlooking the remote areas of Iran and Iraq, where techniques originated and Egypt, where at the moment, finds don't permit us to determine if there was a wide use of architectural glaze ceramics, Maghreb gave, a ba uh, gave back a lot of materials. The thin glazed bricks from the Rakada, Kairouan, and Kalal prove that this architectural decorative taste was appreciated here. Analyzing chronologies, we can recognize two different phases of the use. The first dated between the Alp uh, of the 9th century and the alt of the 11th century is characterized by the use of thin glazed tiles decorated also with luster. The second one, dated from the alt of the 11th century on, presents thin glazed tile used to compose decorative panels, like the one uh, I show from um, San Fruttuoso. <clears throat> Although any production centers have been found yet, scholars as, Jer as Jerkins and Dulatli are pretty sure that these bricks have been produced locally, since a big quantity of material had been found in some important sites, such as Kairouan in Tunisia and Kalal in Algeria. Studies done on Kalal materials also tell us that the clay use was local, so confirming the local production. In the slide, a picture of the internal court of the Great Mosque in Kairouan. It is possible to have a small glimpse of the green decoration of some part of that architecture. Arriving at last in Europe, the Iberian Peninsula presents a diverse panorama about clay springs. In southern Spain and Andalus, there are the older examples of alicatados azulejos. According to Zosaya, these covering techniques have been introduced here after the Arab conquest, as in Sicily. Except for the Ladrillos Curvos on the Mirab Dome of the Cordova Mosque, dated at the 2nd <coughs> of the 10th century, the main part of Spanish glazed bricks are dated between 12th and 14th century. Here, an example uh, <coughs> of one of the internal wall decorations of the Alhambra, that is obviously in Granada. From the written sources, we also know that the master of the Ferraroles, producers of glazed tiles in Catalan, were so often by important church personalities and nobles. An example is a Libre de des Fates, sorry for my pronunciation, biography of Juan I, where it is told that some Valencian ceramists had been called in France at the beginning of the 13th century to work there. Other information about the French habit to cause Spanish artisans to work in building sites are presented in some supply contracts like in the one for clay styles ordered for the palace of Cardinal Oberto Den in Avignon. Near Fabricants de Serre, Christian, there is a Fabricant d'Over de Malicia, a converted Muslim. So concluding, if the clay bricks of Santa Maria del Popolo can really be dated at the beginning of the 12th century, we can believe that has happened in France, an important customer as the bishop of the count or, or the count of Pavia called a Spanish ceramist to decorate the facade of the Winter Cathedral of the city. Unfortunately, datings, datings given up to now cannot be considered valid because not all the analysis documentation have been published by the different scholars. Therefore, it is not possible at the moment to carry on with the research and find an answer to who covered the Pavia brick bricks, when and where did it come from. To solve the Pavia enigma, it is necessary to undergo with new archaeometrical analysis and with in-depth studies of remains of the church and of all the, uh, and of all the documents that, that are still existing in the, in the ecclesiastical uh, and public archives. In my opinion, this is the best way to improve our knowledge about the fabric, the materials and the customer of the church and the best way to have a more complete and precise overview. Thank you for the attention.